Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live with Gina K. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and I'm so excited to see all of you here from all over the country and all around the world. I've been getting all the weather reports from everybody, and it sounds like there's a few uh, people enjoying the same kind of warm weather that we are up here in Wisconsin. I hope everybody had a good day. I hope that everybody has a glass of wine or maybe a bag of cookies or something that'll just kind of take the edge off tonight. Tonight, we are going to be playing with a gatefold card style card. Um, I've done gatefold cards before and they're all over my YouTube channel, but tonight I have a different way of doing it and I can't wait to show it to you. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Tonight is all about fun. No topic tonight. I don't think tonight's the night for a topic. I think it's the night for just pure fun, pure joy, and just an hour to get away from everything else that's going on out there. Um, but a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we can't really answer questions about the status of orders, or we can't really answer any questions tonight regarding um, when things will be back in stock or, or you know, when things are coming into our warehouse. We did just put a whole bunch of stamps, dies, and a bunch of other things in stock. So um, it, you should have gotten an email notice if you were on the wait list for anything. But... Um, Tonight, it's going to be all about fun, and I'm going to be using this tonight. This is the Elegant Edger die, and this came out with our last release, and a lot of you really love this, but I haven't done anything with it in a live. Now, before I get started with this, I am going to show you a card up close that I did for a blog hop today. We did a blog hop with Pear Blossom Press, a great company that has this nifty little gadget that creates lights on your card. And I'm going to show you the card, and then I promise next week I'll do a video, a little how-to video, video on how to use the lights. This way, if you want to get any lights, you can order them from Pear Blossom Press, and uh, you'll have them in time for the video for next week. So let's go to the overhead, and I'll show you that card. This is um, the card that I made for my blog today. It's also over on Instagram. And this uses the Sparkle and Shine kit. And what I did was I embossed this tree with fine detail gold embossing powder. And it has, there's a little button right here. And when you press on the button, let's see if I can do it. The card lights up. Seriously, look how cute that is. So Pear Blossom Press, let me show you, see if I have that close by. They have these little things called easy lights. And this one comes in a three pack. I only used one. So there's the other two. And you can make your cards light up. So if you have like a little birdhouse, I saw Karen Hightower's cute card today. She made, she punched a hole in the birdhouse and made that light up. So cute. Um, you can also decorate a tree. You can decorate an ornament. So many fun things. So next week, I'll be showing you how to do this. And if you want to get yourself a set of these lights, you go to, let me see, is there a website on here? Well, it's not on here, but it's Pear Blossom. Oh, it is. PearBlossomPress.com. Pear, like the fruit, blossompress.com. And you can order your own easy lights. And then next week, I will show you the technique that I used. I had never done it before. I didn't even watch a video to see how to do it. I just, you know, fussed with it a little bit and I figured it out. So that's so fun. So I'll be showing you that next week. All right. So I'm going to put that aside for now. And then we're going to get to this gatefold card. So tonight I'm going to be using the Elegant Edger die. Now we released two edgers with our latest release. We released the Elegant Edger and also this Snowflake Edger. And both of these edgers are really fun to use for your envelopes or maybe the bottom of your card or the side of a card. But this one I really wanted to use today to make a gatefold card because it's got a little hole right here that you can use with some twine or cording to actually close your gatefold card by making a little bow. So, um, oh, regarding the lights, they're, they're no uh, thicker than foam tape. So. Uh, they'll go through the post office just fine. I don't think there's any problems. I haven't sent this one yet. 
Um, but you can always inquire over at Pear Blossom Press. I am brand new with those light cards. I made my very first one last night for the blog hop. So I don't have a whole lot of information about that kind of stuff, but they're very thin, so you shouldn't have a problem. Okay, so let's get started with this project tonight. The, the stamp set that I'm going to use is this beautiful stamp set that was designed by my daughter, Alicia, and this is called Ornamental Snowflake. Uh, ornamental snowflakes. And this is actually from the Sparkle and Shine kit. We have a bunch of these coming in, so you'll be able to get them separately. Pearblossompress.com. I see that question. Pear Blossom. Tom, can you put that up? Get your easy lights at pearblossompress.com. Tom will do a quick banner here so you can see what the, uh, the website is. And that's for the easy lights. So I'm going to be using the ornamental snowflakes for this. This was designed by Alicia, and we have lots of these coming in very soon. Okay, so I'm going to start by, let me zoom out just a little bit so that we don't get caught up in the banner that's going to go up in a second. Okay, so I'm going to start with a piece of white cardstock, and I've cut this cardstock. Let's measure it here. I've cut this cardstock to measure three and three quarters of an inch by five inches. And if you don't wanna cut it yourself, you can cut it with the Master Layouts One die set, and that will cut it to the perfect three and three quarters of an inch by five inch. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of the embossing magic pad, and I'm going to rub that all over the surface of this card stock. I need to use a little extra because I put some lotion on my hands right before I, um, went live. I'm also going to be using some of the Gina K Designs Fine Detail Gold Powder. And I'm going to use, um, uh, going to use this Merry Christmas Greeting. I'm going to put that right there on my card. Kind of a weird spot, but you'll understand why I put it there when you see how this all lays out. So I'm going to use a little Versamark ink on this and I'm going to be embossing a little bit at a time. Okay. Alrighty, so I'm going to put that right in the middle here and stamp that. Okay, and then I'm going to use the fine detail embossing powder and I'm gonna just get this embossed and get it out of the way so that it makes it easy for me to see where it is. I'll just put that aside and then I have my heat tool here. I'm gonna heat this up a little bit first so that I don't warp my cardstock too much. All right, and then I'm going to emboss this. So I made another one of these earlier today and I'm gonna show it to you at the end. It's a little different and I'm really curious to see which style you guys like better. All right, so now I'm going to use, I think I will use um, this snowflake right here. What's really cool about these snowflakes is they look like those old fashioned ornaments that hung on a tree, old Christmas tree ornaments that they were kind of made out of tin and they were real metallic. And sometimes they were even in colors like red and green and purple. They have that same kind of look. I really love this set. We didn't have anything like this this one in our collection. So I thought it was really fun. Okay, so I'm going to put that down there and then I'm going to start in the middle of the card with my first snowflake. I know I'm using an acrylic block. I'm using one of our comfort blocks. You see that nice rounded edge? No sharp edges on these comfort blocks. We do get very dependent on our misty, but it's kind of fun once in a while to stamp with a block. Okay, so I'm going to stamp right there. And then I'm going to stamp one up here at the top. There, and I'm going to stamp one down here near the bottom. Like that. 
Okay. Now I'm going to emboss those next because I really want to see where they are. It'll make it easier for me to place the, um, the additional ones instead of running over each other. Okay, let me just grab a quick little paintbrush out of my drawer. Okay. So I have a little goober here that I wanna get rid of. And there we go. I don't know what that was all about. That very easily could have been lotion. Just sticky lotion for my hands. You know, I'm trying to look young and supple. <laughs> okay, so I'm heating my heat tool up again. I do slightly bend the cardstock, yeah, when I emboss. I do that so that it doesn't kind of flip the other way. I don't know, I've always done that. Sometimes I have to let go, though, if it gets too close to my fingers. Okay. And then let me get to this side. I like the fine detail powder because it shows all the pretty detail of these snowflakes. Aren't they just so pretty. I love those. Okay. So now I'm going to take this one off. And I'm going to use one more. And these are all pretty close in size. So that kind of makes it fun and easy to figure out where to put them because they're all kind of the same size. Okay, the picture shouldn't be blurry. Um, if you're having trouble, you could try, if you're watching on Facebook, try heading over to YouTube or vice versa. I know my clothespin, here's my clothespin. I have my clothespin, I will use my clothespin. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> Okay, so this one I'm going to put right here. I might turn this one a little bit. Are you using the master layout one? I am not using the master layout one. I just cut this out by hand and then I, um, but you can use the master layouts one for sure. So this I, I'm turning a little bit just so that it's a little bit different. And I'm going to do that on the other side up here at the top. I'm going to turn it. Okay. And let me get the embossing powder on here. Yeah, the master layouts one is the same size as what I'm doing. So definitely you can use that. I had just had a bunch of pre-cut panels laying around from a long time ago. And I just grabbed one of those today. So it might not have quite the perfect edge as the master layouts one, but we'll see. Okay. So I turned those and I will do my clothespin trick. There we go. Definitely a wooden clothespin is great because it doesn't conduct all right so pretty okay so there is that and then if you really want to fill it in you certainly can by adding a little bit more, just a little detail. It doesn't have to be a lot. So I'll use the last snowflake. So I'm just going to ink up like one little edge here. And then you can just put two little legs of the snowflake there. I, somebody was very upset on Instagram because snowflakes had, uh, stamp snowflakes have too many legs. I guess then real snowflakes. I never even knew that. I, but I guess snowflakes are six sided and not eight sided. So I guess we'll have to revamp our snowflake designs next year to make them anatomically correct snowflakes. <laughs> I didn't know they only had six legs. I didn't even know they had legs, but that was the conversation in the, on Facebook was snowflake legs. 
So let me just put some embossing powder on these legs. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Clean that off. It's always better to just get it off before you emboss it than trying to scrape it off with a mono sand eraser after. Okay. Let's emboss those. I see a few specks here and there, but it's not so bad. That's part of the handmade charm, right? Okay, so there is my little snowflake pattern. Oh, I love the gold. I'm a silver girl. I always wear silver jewelry. My wedding ring is white gold. And I just, um, you know, I, I've always kind of aligned myself with that color. I guess maybe it's because... I like jewel tones and I like blues and stuff and it always kind of matched better. But when it comes to embossing powder, gold is just amazing. Oh, do you hear the kitty? We have a kitty here tonight visiting. Okay, so now we're going to do the next part. So I'm going to bring out my score buddy. And then what I have here is a piece of cardstock that measures five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So this is just a half sheet of cardstock. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to score this on the two and one eighth of an inch mark. And on my score buddy, and I think most of the score buddies, there's a little dot already there for that two and an eighth inch mark. So I'm going, and that's the gatefold mark. So two and an eighth inch, on this side, and I'm gonna really, you know, get a nice deep score line in there. Then I'm gonna flip it around and do two and an eighth inch on the other side. Okay, so that makes my card fold perfectly in the center. It's my daughter Alicia's kitty. She came by to stay with us for a little bit and we have, uh, we have a little kitty friend. We've had her before when Alicia has been home from New York and she stays with us, but uh, now she's visiting for a little while. COVID just makes everybody kind of, I don't know, sometimes you just need to do something different, even if it's <laughs> just go over to your parents for a while. Okay. So I'm going to put these snowflakes back. I'm trying to keep my space clean so I don't lose anything on my desk tonight. And then um, sometimes I'll put the, uh, the stamps on there and then I'll get my tidy towel like with Versamark and I can just kind of clean them all at one time before I put the, the top sheet on. So there we go. All right. So now it is time to work the magic with this edger die. Now let me show you how easy these dies are to cut. So I'm going to back out just a little bit. Okay. Let me back out. I almost touched the end of my um, heat tool and that would not be fun. Okay. So that you should be able to see it pretty well here. So I have my very beat up spellbinders plates. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the card completely up. And then I'm going to line up the edger die so that it is, it looks pretty even on both sides, right? And then it comes right to the very edge of that piece of cardstock. And then I'm going to use some purple tape and I'm going to tape it down so it doesn't move. It might move a little. Okay. There we go. This one doesn't want to stay down. Okay. Now I have that in place and I'm going to put my plate on top and I'm going to run it through the die cutting machine. This is this die cuts so beautifully. All the dies do, but this one really cuts nicely. Okay. 
So I'm gonna take off the excess here. Okay. Now let's uh, let's get rid of these pieces. I have my Tim Holtz craft pick, and I'm gonna pop out all these little pieces. There we go. I don't know why I decided to do this over my die cutting machine, but you know, struggle's real tonight. I didn't have any wine yet, <laughs> although I should have, right? Okay, so now we have that side of the gatefold card, okay? Let's see. What tip did you miss, Jan? See if Tom sees your tip that you missed. Okay. So now, this is the super easiest thing to line up, okay? So I'm gonna fold the card now, right? I'm gonna fold it. Let me see if I can. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, even though, just so that you can see this better. Okay. So I'm folding the gatefold card and then I'm getting a few pieces of tape. Oh, I do have to get rid of these little pieces here and there's holes in our dies to do that. Get a few little pieces of tape ready. I don't know why I put lotion on. I'm trying to look good and I'm ruining my tape and my embossing powder and okay. So now you're going to just lay that right up against you want the point to be at the edge of the piece of cardstock. And I can see that you might not be able to see it as great as I can, but, and you're just going to match them up. Those two, this, this one, and this one, that one, and that one. So you're just going to match them up there so that they're even. So there's not like a whole lot of fussing and trying to get it perfect. You just match it up like that just by eyeballing it and then get your tape on there. And then once you have it in place, open it back up. Put a piece right there. And then go ahead and cut out the other side. Isn't that super easy? <laughs> okay. Let's take this part. And we'll punch out all of these pieces. So this is fun because you can do like a gatefold card like this, and then you can do your envelope to match. You can make a little gift basket and make this the fancy edge that folds over. It's really neat to be able to kind of coordinate all of this together. I even think something like this would make some kind of pretty thing for your table with place cards or maybe even cut it and then roll it around a napkin. I mean, there's just so many fun things that you can do and it's paper, it's so fun. Okay, so now they meet, see that? And they're perfectly even. Okay, all right, so let me get rid of all of this here. I have a little, you know, we're not even in winter yet, right? We're just in fall still. We're not going to rush the seasons away. But there is so much static everywhere. All of a sudden, it's staticky. My hair is staticky when I put a sweatshirt on. Do you guys have that where you are? Some of you do, right? Some of you who are up north and it's starting to get cold. Maybe you don't have it in places like Florida where you've got nice humidity that keeps everything. I don't know. I like I like humidity a little better than I like it dry. Yes, this is our Gina K Designs heavy base weight red velvet cardstock. So you can see how nicely that die cut that cardstock just beautifully. Right? Yep. Okay. And it's, oh, I have a little thing here, but I will get rid of that. There we go. And this one here, this one little dot in my last card too, I forgot to punch that out. So there we go. Okay, so now it's time to assemble this card. Yeah, I need to run to humidifiers. That's a good idea. All right, let's see. Let's 
Let's make this card first. Okay, so I'm going to stick this card. What I have here, let me measure this out for you. So I actually have a card base here. And I made this card base a little bit smaller than a regular A2 card. This measures four by five and a quarter inches. So it measures, it's, it's a piece that you cut four by 10 and a half inches, and then you score it at the five and a quarter inch mark and it makes this tent fold card, but it's smaller than a regular A2 card. And this is the three and three quarter inch by five inch. You could cut this out with master layouts if you want. And then what we're gonna do here is we're going to tape this. I'm gonna use a little extra tape because of my embossing. Sometimes that makes it just a little bit um, warpy. And I'm gonna put this onto my gold card base. So this is our metallic gold. And a couple people have asked, is your metallic gold, um, I'm gonna use this side, is your metallic gold shiny, like reflective? And it isn't, it's a brushed gold. So it's very, very soft. You can see, see that it's got shine to it, like a sheen, but it's very soft. So you don't have to, it's not like a mirror. And then what I have here is another piece of three and three quarters inch by five inch. And then I am going to put that on the inside. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because this metallic cardstock, it's hard to write on it unless you use like a permanent marker, like a Sharpie. And um, I, I don't know, I make a lot of mistakes when I'm writing cards. So what I tend to do is cut the panels and I write them all first and then I put the written panel inside the card. So this way if I make a mistake, I'm only throwing away the panel and I haven't damaged the card. And there's no way that I would be able to write with a Sharpie on here because I would make a mistake and then it would have a big Sharpie scribble. All right, so now I'm going to add some gold sequins onto this card. I like the mix of the brushed gold. This is the brushed gold. And then the antique look of the embossing powder gold with this very reflective shiny gold sequin. I really enjoy those three uh, different kinds of golds together. And I'm gonna use a little bit of Connect Glue. I'm just gonna pick some spots to put some random sequins. That has an air bubble. Um, put one here. Can you stamp on that gold piece? Um, you could stamp on it if you had something like stays on, definitely, but it is not a porous paper. It's a very shiny kind of paper. So I would suggest that, you know, you use something like stays on some kind of permanent ink. Somebody asked if you could stamp on it. I guess you got that idea, right? So I'm gonna put these sequins on here, figure out which way they go. Cup side up, upward, or as Tom says, cupward, <laughs> to remember which way they go. <laughs> I love that. All right, one more down here. That's just to add a little zing to it. You could use rhinestones. You could use, if you wanted to make this same card but not metallic, you could use little buttons that you might have in your collection. And that would really look cute with those antique style snowflakes as well. Okay, so that's my card and it's all ready to be written on. So now my next step is to insert this card into the center here of this gatefold. And then we're going to seal it up like that and you'll still be able to see the Merry Christmas coming out near the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna do that with a little bit of tape and I am out of my Gina K Designs tape and I'm using my old Thermal Web Sticky Dot runners but they work really well. I, that's what really made me want ThermoWeb to make a tape runner for me because I love their adhesive products. They're really good. Okay, so let's get this all nice and pressed down. 
So you can see what happens here. So the card opens this way and then it opens this way. Make sense? Okay. Uh, let's see. When I store my Connect Glue, I store it in one of these little um, storage things by Make It by Marco. And I store it like face down like this so it never clogs. I don't really have a problem with it clogging, so I'm not sure why it would clog. But I guess you could try um, pushing a pin through it. It shouldn't really clog, though. And, um, and I just store it like this upside down. And that does help get some of the air out. Okay. So now I've got some old gold cording. This was like, I don't know, we had it a million years ago. We couldn't get it anymore. We bought the last of it. And when it was gone, it was gone. But you can find gold cording like this at any of the big box stores. Some of your online stores will have it as well. Um, I just want to make sure these sequins are all kind of in place. Okay, and then I'm going to feed this through my card like this. And then I'm going to tie a little bow. We'll see, I'm not going to do a fancy bow. I'm going to do it upside down. If you have trouble with where your tails end up on your bows, try flipping your card upside down. I've found that that works so much better. You have old gold cording too, Jeannie? That's awesome. I love it. Okay. There we go. And I know Stampin' Up! had this for years. And, I, you know, I used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator a million years ago. And, of course, I had the uh, the gold cording. I think they had it in silver, too. We were only ever able to find it in gold. But, okay. So, I'm going to do a little snip here and a little snip down here. And there is my gatefold card. What do you think? Kind of fun, right? I really like that. Now let me show you the one that I did earlier. This one I did in all red and I outlined it in white. So I don't know if you guys like this one better or this one. I really like this because you can see the detail a little bit better than this, but I still think that the embossing is just beautiful on this card. So check out the embossing on this. Isn't that pretty too? Oh my goodness. I really love it. Yep, so again, so there's another way you can do a decorative, um, well, you if you don't have this, you could use baker's twine, that would work. You could also use ribbon if you wanted to use like a big piece of fat ribbon. It's just there's something about tying a cording that makes it very easy for the person receiving the card to untie it. So I like using cording or baker's twine instead of ribbon. Ribbon, the knot gets a little bit hard to undo. And, you know, the person might want to, you know, put that cording back on again because it looks so pretty when it's closed. So the glue holder is by, it's by a, an Etsy store. Some friends of mine, Rebecca and Marco, make it by Marco. Um, they, uh, they 3D print these and they do them for our glue and they also do them for our tidy towel. So if you want to look and see, and they have all kinds of colors, so you can pick whatever color you want to match your stamp room. And they sent me this one because they know I'm kind of a turquoise blue person. So they sent me that one and I love it. And I keep my glue. I actually have a couple of them because I always have a couple of glues around in my stamp room. So that is my finished card for tonight. I can't believe we got done in 35 minutes. I really thought this was going to take a lot longer. I don't know. <laughs> so I also think that you could easily use this. Like I said, if you were to cut this out, let me cut one out and just show you. So I'll put these aside and then we can look at them again. But let me cut one of these out. Let me get my die cutting machine here. I think I like the white one better, actually, guys. Yes, make it by Marco. They're awesome. They're actually working on something with us for our new blender brushes that are going to be coming out. So I'm excited about that. Let's see if I can back up here. 
There we go. Okay. So let me cut another one of these. You don't have to worry about where you position it um, unless you're actually, you know, making a design in a card. If you're just cutting this on a piece of scrap cardstock. So Tom, will you do me a favor? In the drawer in our kitchen on the other side of the island, there are some top, some napkins. Will you go get me a napkin? Okay, Tom's going to get a napkin. So this would be kind of a fun thing to do for Thanksgiving or Christmas. So let's cut this out. Can you get one that would coordinate with red? <laughs> Luckily our kitchen is like right over there, I can see. Okay. So I'm gonna take this out like this. Look at how everything just fell out of that. That was really easy. Well, I'll take the green one, that's good. Okay, so this is a Longaburger napkin. I'm sure some of you guys have gone to parties and had to buy something. I have so many baskets from the old days. <laughs> so I was talking to my friend, Corin Wiskman, and she was, she kind of likes Longaburger too. And we were talking about maybe doing something together, maybe even in a video where we paint our Longaburger baskets to make them more modern. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay. So this would be a really cool little way to wrap your napkins. Wouldn't that be fun? A belly band for your napkins. You can also cut this out with glitter cardstock and do something like that. Yeah, the red and green, using red and green. Oh yeah, red and green for blind people. It's hard to see the colors. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, let's try this. Here we go. Tan and red. <laughs> Tan and red. Okay, so you could wrap your napkin. I actually have an old video somewhere where I actually did a whole table setting using stamps and die cuts. I did it for Spellbinders a long time ago. It was for a television spot in Madison. And it was really, really fun. So you could use these for things like that, for wrapping up your napkins for the holidays. I also think it would make a very cute uh, little place card, like a crown of a place card. And also, you could decorate your envelopes with these. Let me see if I have an envelope close by. I won't use green. But you can imagine using this and just cutting the edge of the envelope with just that part of the die. How pretty that would be as well. So let's take one more look at these cards, and then I think we're going to call it early tonight. Uh, here's the red one. And this is just a simple red velvet card with gold embossing powder. Will these die cuts cut, will these dies cut felt? If you normally can cut felt with your uh, wafer thin dies, then these will work. I've never cut felt with them, so I don't know. And so this one, this one I just designed like this, where it didn't really open. This was my first try at it. But actually with the card I made tonight, if you're just joining us, I did cut it so that it opens so that you can write something on the inside. Yes, it does look like a little princess crown. You're right. Make another card. <laughs> oh, I don't know that I have time to make a whole other card. I might, I might have time. All right, we'll make one more. We'll do one more in a different color combination, okay? Let's do, let me find it. Okay, so you guys know that I love Christmas pine. Christmas pine is by far one of my favorite greens for the holidays, and we do have the matching ink for this. We do not have envelopes. The mill that mills this color for us, we use a couple different mills for manufacturing our cardstock, and they do not do this. They don't, they don't do thinner paper, so they can't make envelopes for us. They only do cardstock. So I'll make one more. Let's see how it goes. Um, okay, so I will score this at the two and a quarter inch mark. 
And then I will turn it over and do it, not two and a quarter, two and an eighth, two and an eighth. Don't do it at two and a quarter, it won't work. Okay. And then that will be a gate fold right there. And I gotta really get that down. And we can do one without embossing powder. Let's do that. Let's try one without embossing powder. We'll go a little quicker. Let's cut these out. And if you missed it, you're just joining us. We're going to cut this out again. You can get the, the lowdown on how to do this one more time. So we're going to start with two plates here. And we are going to line up this die. Oh, I have so much junk in this one. I got to get all this out real quick. That's what these little holes are for in the back. They easily pop out all of the pieces that you don't want in there. And I know there's little tools that you can roll over the back. Um, so I have a hard time getting that always to work for me. I'm sure it's user error because I never read the instructions. That's why, <laughs> that's why it was so, uh, interesting that I figured out how to do those lights because I didn't watch a video or anything. I just did a wing it. Okay. So we will tape this down so that it does not move right on the edge there. It's going right up to the edge. Do you know the size of the paper before scoring? Yes, the size of the paper before scoring, the size of this green paper before scoring is five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So it's just a half sheet of cardstock. Half sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Okay, and then, you know, I was kind of worried that it was gonna be hard to, now if you ever think that it didn't cut all the way through, before you take it out, just put your plate on there, flip it upside down and cut it one more time. That will definitely make sure that it cuts all the way through. There we go. That just makes everything fall out. Something about turning it upside down, a lot of people be like, oh, I have a very intricate die and I can't get it to cut. If you flip it upside down so that the blade is facing upward, I don't know, it seems to work really nicely. Okay, so let's just get all that off of there. And then we will line it up on the other side after I get these little pieces out. And then we're gonna stamp with Christmas pine ink, just for a different look. It'll be a little bit more, less glitzy and more, I don't know, a little bit more country feel to it. Maybe not country though, because this is still such an elegant design. Okay, so now we're going to fold this over and we're gonna fold this over. And then we're just going to line that die up just so that those points right there meet. Let me check it one more time. Yep, looking good. And once we know it's where we want it, then we're gonna tape that down. Oh gosh, I'm reusing score tape, uh, purple tape. Okay, and then we open it up again. And then, boy, I've got little things everywhere. And then we're gonna cut it out. feels, sorry, I just banged the microphone. I hope that didn't like sound like an earthquake. And then again, see what I'm doing here? I'm just taking this piece off. But if you want, it's got a little tape on it. If you want, you can run it through a second time on the back just to make sure that everything cut exactly how you want it makes it really easy for thicker cardstock. And I don't think this green is thicker, but I don't want to take any chances. They're all a um, hundred pound. All our colors, our heavy base weight colors are all a hundred pound. Okay. And then we will close that. So now we've got that 
cute little fold. Okay. Easy, what's it called? Easy C tape, similar to the original purple tape. You know, I'm a thermo web girl through and through. I can't can't go against my thermo web. <laughs> I love them too much. They're my people. Okay, um, but I'm sure it's really good. I just uh, I've got my little loyalty thing going here. Okay, so now I'm going to cut this out. I have everything everywhere. So this is going to be three and three quarter inches by five inches. I think I'm still going to use gold for the card base underneath. All right. And then I'm going to get my Christmas pine ink. I haven't broken this out yet this season. As you guys know, you've been here with me and you know that I am... I've been embossing like absolute crazy. So where did my stamp set go? Oh, it's under all these Longaburger napkins. So let's do happy holidays. No, let's do another Christmas one. I, I really want Christmas ones. I need to get my Christmas cards started now. <laughs> all right. Okay, here we go. Always nervous when I don't have my Misty. There we go. Okay, looking good. Crisp. Let's clean that off. This one I don't want to clean off later because it's a color and it'll get all over my skin. Well, this will be super easy to stamp and see where I'm stamping. See, once you know what you're doing, these go really fast. It's always like making that first one. I love the detail in this stamp. So the paper cutter that I'm using here tonight is the We Are Memory Keepers paper cutter. But I'll tell you, um, I've been really loving the Tim Holtz one. <laughs> This one was just right here by me. I didn't expect to make this additional card. And my Tim Holtz one is over. I can see it across the room. And this was close by. Um, really digging the Tim Holtz one, the mini one. Okay. And now, of course, we could do this in red and green. But I think I'm going to stick with the monochromatic look here. So we'll do this. This is exactly what I did with the other one. Love the details. When Alicia draws for me, we actually do it over like a Zoom meeting. And so she'll draw and I'll say, oh, can you do this instead? Or can you do a little bit of that? And it's really fun. We have a lot of fun together doing that. And when she was drawing these, we were just getting so excited because it was reminding us of just a really old fashioned Christmas look. Do that. I can even do a couple down here because I can see so well. These are also fun to actually color in. You could color these in just a little bit if you wanted to because they have open spots. So that is so fun. <laughs> My stamping sounds like an angry parrot. <laughs> I can see that. I agree. I think it can sound like that. Okay, so now let me, now I need a big paper cutter. So let me pull my big monster paper cutter in here. It's always sitting on the top of my desk. This is the tonic one. Oh my goodness, this thing is huge for a video. All right, the angry parrot is gonna cut some paper now. So I'm gonna cut this to four inches. This is actually four and a half, in, or yeah, four and a half inches. I'm gonna cut this to four inches. So I'm gonna do, yeah, four inches by 10 and a half inches. 
So that's going to be my card base. And I'm going to score that at five and one quarter of an inch. There we go. Okay, that was good because math is hard for me when I wing it and it works. So I'm extra happy tonight. Okay, so this is going to go on top the little bit of tape. And we definitely need to add some sequins into here. The gold would be really pretty. I think gold would be the ticket. And I have them all strewn about here. So I'm going to add them now. And then we will finish up this card. So actually, to make this a little easier, I'm going to pop this in here now. Let me open this up. And I'll pop this in here now. I'm going to run out of tape again. So we can kind of look at it. There we go. Yeah, there we go. I love it. And we'll add a couple little sequins here and there. Get my, my connect glue going. Okay. We'll put one here. One here. One here. One here. And now we might as well go in like a wreath. There we go. I've got them all sitting out here all over the place. They're hard to pick up when it's staticky. I'm going to try that two humidifier trick in my craft room. Now in the summer, we get kind of um, humid here in Wisconsin and sometimes my paper warps from the humidity. I feel like this needs a couple more sequins. I'll put one down here. And one right here. I know some of us don't like even sequins. We like odd. Some of us don't care. Okay. So there is that Christmas pine one. And then I would just add a piece of white cardstock. This one, I'm not going to add it in now because like I told you, I actually like to write on my um, pieces of cardstock before I put them inside the card. Okay. So let's tie this up. I think a Christmas pine one was necessary tonight. We needed to do this color. All right. I'll take pictures of them separately so that anybody that has trouble seeing the red and the green together will be able to see them as separate photos. There we go. Boom, boom. And there is that card. Oh, blue denim would be great too, yes. But now I really only have five minutes left, so I could never pull that off. <laughs> so let me tie up this one one more time so I can take some pictures of this when I'm done. Now, for those of you that are new to um, my lives, you can head over to the Gina K Designs Facebook group. It's called Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. I always post pictures of my cards after the video after the live so that you can see them a little bit better. I know sometimes it's a little fuzzy and you can't always see them, but you'll be able to see them really nicely over there in our Facebook group. So give us a try. It's a private group, so you'll have to join, but we let, we approve people really quickly and it's a very, very supportive, fun group. And we'd love to see your Gina K designs projects in there too. All right. So those are my finished cards. 
Well, thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I had a lot of fun. I really needed this hour and I hope that you guys got something out of it as well. If you have any edger dies or even border dies, you can try a trick like this. Maybe you have an open scalloped border die. Anything that you can loop through to tie a bow will work for this technique. Um, these dies are available on our website at GinaKDesigns.com so you can pick up your uh, elegant edger die over there anytime. All right, you guys. Well, I will be back next Monday and next week. I'm not sure if it'll be Monday or Wednesday, but I, I think I'm going to push that to Wednesday to do the light up cards. This way, for those of you that want to get the light mechanism, you can head over to pearblossompress.com and get your own lights. If you're just joining us, I'll show you real quick what we're going to do. This is the card that I made for a blog hop. So if you want to Go over to the there you go thanks tom i'm sorry i know i threw that at you <laughs> but i'm going to show how to make a light up card like this next wednesday and it's super easy to do so if you want to play along you can head over to the pear blossom press website and pick up these light elements they have a three pack over there that's perfect i don't know i don't know that i would send a million of these but these would be for very special people maybe for my kids or you know somebody that you're gonna hand deliver it to. It's just really fun. So I'll be doing that next Wednesday and we can go back to my front shot here. Okay, here I am. And, uh, but next Monday we'll have another fun holiday project, maybe something 3D. I'll think about what we can do that's really fun. But in the meantime, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, stay sane, hang in there. It's all gonna be okay. No matter what happens, it's all gonna be okay. I love you all so much. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.